Christmas is not only truly serious about not necessarily perpetuity, but long term, that we should focus on enduring features in conservation planning in addition to not, not in exclusion of scenarios of individual species and their habitat. But Identifying and, and creating plans just to conserve enduring features is not sufficient. To, well, it's not going to ensure that uh, species don't go locally extinct or populations or genotypes. Merely conserving the ecological stage is not going to necessarily uh, guarantee uh, survival of the actors. So, in the ensuing decades, let's say until, until 2070 or 2100, we also have to continue to pay attention to over an at risk species, maintenance of connectivity. Based on uh, focal species biology and contemporary land cover and patterns of productivity, I, I sort of feel that as we're uh, entering a tunnel or a, a constriction. We need a variety of approaches and tactics to get as much biodiversity as possible through the big squeeze to the end of this century. Do you agree with that? Uh, does this make you uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 <laughs> the stage is the geophysical substrate or uh, template upon which the biota are moving. <laughs> Well, yes, well, a change is the only true constant. But I guess what I was getting at here is that uh, if, again, yeah, being optimistic, if greenhouse gas emissions are reduced and if some of the the scenarios of human behavior are favorable, uh, the climate may start to stabilize in the next century. Mm -hmm. That's why I chose 20 minutes. I'd very much like to have a variety of I think it's a And in the current societal situation, that's a hard one. And you have to sustain the yeah. And so we need options that that is one, and I have to be one of the things that we need. Because if it's the only thing that's available, we're going to have you. I've, I have been advocating from four enduring features in that approach, but that's because it's something different. It's an alternative, and uh, I do think it's, it could lead to long-term, true long-term conservation planetary. I like those who have concepts for long-term and enduring features. You know, it's sort of kind of a change of the life of the human. 
something on the order of seven and fifty or seventy-five years, something like that. Seems like it's an interesting communication tool in talking to people about what they are going to do with their children and their students. Everyone communicates this and it depends on the new life. So 2100 is kind of a little bit of a day, but what, what you're going to see in your lifetime is that your children are going to have to live with. That's something that's important to know. Yeah, and I also I don't want to uh, jump on traditional conservation biology, partly because uh, there are quite a few vocal species that will continue to deserve our attention for a lot of different reasons, and because a lot of us have invested emotionally and intellectually in and these species in these ecosystems that we love. So I don't want to discard them. vigorous call to action. I mean, planning requires some of these uh, semi-lame generalizations. <laughs> Can we quote that? <laughs> <laughs> but again, let's have a look at these and, and uh, I'll ask you, what do you think of them? Do they make you uncomfortable? And especially, uh, the third one, focusing on some of the neighboring ecosystems to start, I guess, and reorganize the emphasis on processes rather than status quo distribution. I totally agree with that, and I think that's somewhat in line with the about going to tech and so on. So I think when you consider the Conservation <laughs> So thinking about the ability to have more knowledge of that today, we may even be able to find that that's what we have now, and we think we should have to look for it in the past. I think we should also be aware of it. We might have to. Yeah. Yeah. This will require a re-evaluation of, of the role of protected areas, core and buffer and matrix in the public future. When you're thinking of local species, is that, is that kind of a case depends, or are you thinking that local species would have some kind of ecological system that could or is it just what you want? Uh, they all have ecological systems. Um, these are the ones that, these are the ones that have been identified by the communities involved in the land use planning. I work in the northern British Columbia. I have a whole list of species that I think are, are really important, like lemmings, and, and uh, predatory birds. And that's more because of their role. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Karen? I guess I think the idea of the Conservation value is so, um, <laughs> so 
So we're going to discuss these are low conservation values, high development and kind of use of those. And then the stuff in the middle is like, you know, and we draw lines on the map and we say this is that building, this is that building, this is the stuff that's right over and we split it up. And, this. and it, 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 it's very static then on the line. And it doesn't, it's not very fun. So, as actually developing some of these things, I can only drive them out from distance and say, okay, what do we want to do in the future that will prepare us for the longer term without having to tell people, you have to stop doing this thing when you can't do this and you want to do that today because 30 years of future is something really different. We need to know that or what those contributions are. Because we don't use that in cases and land and community having fun. So in my mind, that's kind of what I think is all of that. I'll see these videos, but that's all the other things that we have to do. Thank you. Because it's possible, though, that say a chain of existing protected areas down the coastal lowlands from uh, uh, Anchorage to Vancouver is already well situated. Um, so you don't have to do anything that's great? No, they're all situated to contribute to a landscape movement space. And if we can somehow buffer them to render the matrix more favorable or more maintained as it's already favorable, that's going to be one of the major continental scale movement causes, in my opinion. Absolutely. But again, the experience is about How close are we to work up to where we want to be as far as the part of the area? So that is what we need to do. And I'm not sure. 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 Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. I definitely wanted to uh, elaborate on that. My uh, qualification would be if it makes sense. And I, I would argue that in most cases, it doesn't. In most cases, I don't think it makes sense. Yeah. But, how many of you know remember? Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC. This is a post depression program initiated by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, part of the Green Deal. The federal government provided lots of money to put unemployed people mostly in Canada, I think, to work doing uh, conservation-oriented stuff, like planting trees, building trails, building uh, shelters. They still exist in a lot of the parks in lower 48. Um, and if you're thinking of a, the social ecological system, it might make sense to uh, have unemployed, presently unemployed people working on those kinds of projects that could help maybe not restore, but uh, improve or, or lessen the degradation, or planting trees uh, for better carbon stewardship or something like that. It's hard to argue with that, but it's just in the current context of how we treat the value restoration I agree. But you know, uh, I don't know why nobody talks about the season. It was a good idea back then, it would be a good idea now. Instead, they throw millions at these uh, bankers and inside traders. <laughs> I was actually going to comment on the 
the right responder is because I think in the when we have a after we are like in the last year in Canada, but we are still pretty much as a we've walked away from it or we haven't walked away from it yet stage in the last time in a lot of our decisions. And this, this gets at what I was talking about in the ensuing decade, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to keep what we have for a few, a few of the ensuing decades. I'm going to 
Good point. Happy growth. I've heard that in some some places in Idaho, but also Muskoka, where they allow some access roads, they're required or trying not only to put them to bed, but to actually be a contour. Okay. I'll have a date on it. We'll have a date on it. Some of these all have to keep. This is my personal opinion. I'm very keen on Eagle portfolio diversification, as in South. And I think of it as a form of risk management. But also, I think we've got to revamp our ideas of nature conservation. Again, we are reorienting from it. Historical or status quo distributions of abundance of choice. Maintaining resilience. Ecosystems of sometimes novel composition of the continuous deliver ecosystem services. Try and retain the diversity of whatever we assemble, not necessarily native species. And again, that kind of brings you back to well, what is a Native species that comes from east of the Rockies is, is it non native? And uh, I have concluded that we will have to practice triage for the RDR. 